political blackmail seems to be the new currency that Kenyans will have to contend with. Welcome to the Bold Analysis. Guys, I want to request you to subscribe to our channel. Thank you. I've realized that uh, the rate of subscription has gone high and I am so grateful for that. Let's push this to the very, very next level. Ladies and gentlemen, I have said over time that we have a challenge in this country. And the biggest challenge is that people who are supposed to speak on behalf of Kenyans, we have a representative democracy. Where Kenyans go to elections, they pick their leaders. So we have the president, deputy, senate, governor, MPs. But we also have other group, the clergy, council, that also add into the voice of representation. And this is normally a group that are ordained. So the challenge here is this, that the clergy have sought or not have, the clergy are idolizing the leadership of the country without asking questions. And I feel the voice of the church in election reform is already suppressed. What am I talking about? <laughs> you know, now we have a conversation and I've said this, that the conversation we have in this country going on is about what happened in the last general election. This conversation, we've seen a report from a whistleblower. It did not start by that whistleblower. It started by President himself reminding this country that someone wanted to take Chibukati upwards. Now, I want to play for you a clip of the church telling us, clergy in Transoya telling us, that here chapter to Lipita, who won, who never won. And that one is something I want you to hear. And that's why I'm saying that we are not here. Listen to this. It was a very difficult moment, and still not yet out of the woods. That I hear now people have started Guli Nani Alishinda, Nani Alishinda. We thought we closed that we closed that chapter. Mulipita here chapter nanahani. Let's get it. You know, put a chapter You know, let's not start politics. Let's start working and walking what we all promise Kenyans. So this calls for all, all the clergy and religious men now and women to walk around the new bishop, sit down and ulizaneni. Tufanyeje to Songembele. Tukombele, my good friend the Cardinal says, Tumetoka Mbali, Tukombali, na tunaenda Mbali. We are all going far. Let's hold hands. Let's walk together. And I want to remind myself, even us, church, and all churches, we are not competing with the government for anything. We are complementing each other. Because the government has a duty to educate children, the church embraces them also. So partnerships are key to success in this world now. And listen everywhere, the nations are coming together. The tribes and tribes are come together. Even Ushindi Wakura, haukuwa ni kabila moja, ilikuwa ni vyama viliungana. So let's walk the, the world. Listen to what they are saying. But these are the same people telling you that Ilisha, we are not talking about it. But then they are taking that podium to do politics. I'm telling you, these prayer services, I'm seeing mobilization. I don't know whether I have that poster. <laughs> I should get you a poster. 
um let me look let me look for this poster it is a uh, it is one that i got in twitter and it was very interesting eh? i want to look for it i tell you that president uses these sessions huh? uh now look at that poster you are seeing <laughs> now look at this kerugoya stadium interdenominational thanksgiving service the only thing that makes it interdenominational is the bible in it <laughs> angalia ni viongozi tu eh Ruto, Gashagwa, Honorable Gashogi Gitari, Anwaiguru, Jen Jerry, Kamau Murango, George Gidimu, Honorable Mary Maingi, George Karimu. Are you see not even guys there is not even uh, there is even no picture of photo of a, of a church or even or even pastor. There is this is just a a poster a political rally poster that church has been used to mobilize this photo speaks volumes <laughs> it speaks volumes that's what we are talking about the president is already campaigning <laughs> so partnerships and that's why i like to as i thank god and welcome my brother just take an example and i want to thank you your excellency and i want to thank you for coming on board and quickly setting teams that are going to think through education because that is one of our key component of success without education forget it we will go nowhere let me tell you there is a very and i'm not afraid to say it's an escapist narrative that we moved on anyway everyone moved on people moved on and does does moving on mean we can't talk about 2013 2017 2022 2017 because even government moved on but how many times in a week will you hear them talking about uru kenyatta <laughs> you know we are in and that's why i say that we, we have a currency called blackmail ever moved on but how often do you realize the political leadership talking about uhuru this uhuru that we want to take this country back to kibaki we are moving on but you are telling us <laughs> they did not start yeah and that's why i'm telling you there is this is a well coordinated narrative as that was going on there is another bunch of some you some leaders who converged in serena hotel and called a presser this is what they are saying <laughs> you would ignored all the aspirants of jubilee you never supported them and they turned out and they voted for them for ruto last minute so stop telling people that election was stolen there was no vote which was stolen and if they are that chapter is behind us i had my leaders if you want to be a president of this country talk about 2027 and not 2022 2022 is gone i am here with the chairman of united clergy who is supporting this statement and a economist and a, another uh, member for uh, a standing member of kamba community and we feel as the community when all these issues are going around what will happen will drag our economy down ni kweli tulipita hiyo chapter but when the president speaks about non evidenced uh, reports that there are plans to take chibukati upwards then there is no problem but when the whistleblower report comes out and we have a conversation the debate comes out in public on what happened then you're told we moved on and that's where i have a problem i say it in my very analysis some back in september somewhere back in september that the pulpit was a media that was used to talk to kenyans and as the good man they say is that they are complimenting the government they complimented them during campaigns and they campaigned but after that 
we all have government. They are the same people that should also ask the questions. And is supporting government only listening to what the president says? Don't you think that all of us, you also need to listen to the other side? You also need, need to listen to what Azimia is saying. Because according to them, they've bought the script that look here, that everything gone on, man, everything goes sour, let's move on. Let's, what is, let's move on? Because maybe the clergy are not politicians, and so they don't have political ambitions. Number one. Number two, they may, may not be speaking on behalf of the people. They're big speaking on their own behalf. So what are we dealing with? When, and let me tell you, Ruto has opted to coordinate this and the clergy's to talk on the IBC and dismiss these reports because if there is something that has Miogo tried is when these whistleblower reports came out, it was at the moment president had started talking about the Chibukati issue and the sanity of Chibukati and the narrative would go that okay, Kumbe, Maybe, uh, maybe Ruto maybe said a shit that the problem was Uhuru Kenyatta. That's what maybe was supposed to come out. And so when that whistleblower came out, it, it showed the other aspect. Number two, it came at a time when the commission, the commissioners were out. And so they wanted an office. So how are they going to defend themselves, call press briefings and talk about it? And they went totally silent. Let me tell you. Um, this... Um, we moved on. I want to say Kenyans moved on. Akuna mta lipige mozaki. Akuna mta lileta shida. Watu wanaishi na amani. People are very peaceful. But talking about this thing is not vindictive. It's not wrong to talk about it. Because even the people that moved on with power are still talking about it. Are we not seeing anniversary of earthquake? Mtali Mdavad is, talking, uh, is telling us about 23rd January they are going to plan the first anniversary of earthquake. Are we not seeing homecoming being organized? You know? Are we not seeing calls or inquiry of what happened in Bomas? Surely. So why are we saying that those who are talking about it have not moved on? It's not about it. Guys, this is why this escapist narrative is coming up. Ruto will not want to charge the hustlers against the others. Because as we talk now, there is a small gap between hustler and non-hustlers. Whether you voted or you didn't vote, the taxes that are coming are going to hurt you. The inflation, all of us are going to be affected. The hustler fund loan limit is for all of us. And everything that is not going on well is affecting all of us. So now, it is not politically viable to group your hustlers and tell them this is about this and this. Because even the same, the same hustlers are now seeing the difference. That okay, hey, see as I leash a kumbe, say ni kila mtu sasa na peba muslama waki. That's what's going on. So you will not, you will want to take that escapist narrative and you will take it away from him. See the others now, Elaine talking about it. I've seen Musalia, I saw Kimani Chumba the other day. And quite a number of leaders have been speaking about it. So it's because the hustlers, you will not want to charge a conversation about those who believe they are part of the hustler nation narrative, hustler nation idea, and those who are not. Because as we talk now, both non hustlers and the hustlers are suffering. Ladies and gentlemen, Raila is silent over the matter. And you can rush into it and maybe take it head on. But before you know, even Raila himself, you realize that he's not maybe part of it and he's coming later or don't know how he's going to take it. And number two, you will not want, you don't know what is going to be next for him. You can speak and you charge and take that debate, debate forward. And as you take that debate forward, you don't know the end game. <laughs> I know that's what political advisors have told the president. That you don't know the end game of Raila's move with the whistleblower report. Is it getting into, it can it blow to a full uh, program in terms of maybe campaigns or something? Like that? And what the Kenya Kwanzaa political team knows is that there is a ploy to set stage for early campaign. I am wondering how we can be lectured or how the Kenya Kwanzaa will lecture 
politicians on let's move on and start working because <laughs> president ruto started working immediately after handshake that was some months after uhuru kenyatta was sworn in so the ghosts of early campaign and Volo has been told that it affected issues the other side, they'll come into the fold. And the president is fearing that, not that he doesn't want to campaign, or he doesn't want to get to early campaigns. You know, he's already doing it. Whether you like it or not, that's what's going on. So, there's a plan for early campaigns, and I don't think it will be wise to start blaming, saying that, okay, how want to play a campaign, I want to play a campaign, wewe mwenyewe ndio umeanza na hiyo even ni safi ya campaigning now there is one that to this finalize with it can develop a narrative of a one term president i don't know i don't know guys i know the narrative there is one narrative that has been so strong and i say it's a very dangerous one for people who have embraced it that we won against you with the deep state with the deep what and just new what and media and everything when you had everything the same people that are saying that narrative are also telling you that we won by the people of Kenya so are we saying that you must use those the, the deep things that we've been talking about you must use the deep state and everything for you to win an election if it has been simple for president Trudeau to win an election against Raila Odinga if he did he won with all those deep things he's been the, the deep aspects we've been talking about then maybe it is about the people so if it is about the people then why are you not appreciating that the same people <laughs> that gave Kenya Kwanza power are the same people that can still remove them in power that narrative guys it's a very dangerous one and we will be dancing on our grave we will normalize election rigging where we now say okay you know what someone was saying it can be said kevin we rigged you when you have deep state and did de de this and this what will stop us from rigging you when we have now everything <laughs> i don't know how you understand it and that's what i say that this thing is developing into a narrative of president tuto one coming one time i don't know who said it must be two times kenya is a country of breaking records i know that point has people talking about it in terms of impossibilities but let's be careful let's be objective on this one what it will develop into it's a conversation we're going to have even if not today or not tomorrow we will have this discussion on election reforms it's something that is viable for us because without politics and development goes hand in hand and without democracy without justice we have a half baked democracy that's my take let's meet in the next i have a very interesting analysis on